need to say start. So by way of uh, introduction, uh, before we get started with uh, us today is uh, Dominican artist uh, Gato Encarcion. Yeah, I do. Very good. Okay. And, uh, and Andy, Andy Neslin, who is um, an American uh, living in the Dominican Republic at the moment. And uh, something is a nice thing to talk about. And I'll say most important is Angie's my goddaughter. <laughs> and through Angie, I've gotten to uh, know uh, Gato. Um, originally talking a lot about music and um, sharing some of their the performances they're creating in the Dominican Republic. And then just through a curiosity of my own about Gato's art, uh, have come to really admire the work he does and um, the way that he's pursued his art path. And so we decided to work together on a collaboration that we'll get into in a little bit. Um, before we do that though, I would love it if you guys would share a little bit about La Rafaga, which is your band, which um, maybe tell us a little bit about the type of music you play and uh, what the purpose of the band is, like what was the, the genesis of it all? Entonces, para hablar sobre la ráfaga. Uh -huh. So I'm going to be the translator here la for genesis. the most part. La génesis de la banda, de la creación, fue cuando nos conocimos, comenzamos a tocar guitarra junto para pasar el tiempo, y yo estaba tocando en otra banda, I used to play in another band, eh, pero yo paré de tocar en esa banda por asuntos personales. Entonces, eh, las canciones que yo tenía en la otra banda, el desarrollo, era sobre temas sociales y como Angie estaba trabajando en el barrio con temas sociales de desarrollo, pues entonces eran ideas afines, así que decidimos desarrollar en conjunto una nueva, un nuevo proyecto musical. Eh, no igual que el anterior, pero parecido con la fusión de los sí. instrumentos de música ah. afrodominicanos y, y los instrumentos de la música, vamos a decir, occidental, rock, pop, guitarra, batería. Yeah, so La Ráfaga, which is our band, and a ráfaga means like um, a, a gust of wind or like a lightning bolt. It's kind of a force of nature. And it's an appropriate name because the band was actually born during a hurricane, during the very first hurricane that I experienced when I moved to the Dominican Republic in the fall of 2016. And so Gatto at that time was playing in another band uh, where he was uh, writing a lot of lyrics and doing a lot of investigation into um, Afro-Caribbean percussion patterns. And a main focus for him has always been social issues. He's from the barrio, which um, as he says, is like the Dominican hood, basically. Um, so they're neighborhoods that are, are marginalized in many ways, whose, whose residents have been marginalized in many ways by their government, by their society. Um, and I actually moved to the Dominican Republic to work in a barrio, so to work on those same social issues that Gato is very passionate about. And so that during this hurricane in fall of 2016, um, we we were locked inside together for a few days and we start i started playing some of my guitar compositions for him and he started rapping some of his lyrics um on top of them and we discovered that they went together really well and we were really interested in making music that would speak to these social issues political issues um and that would musically combine his influences uh, especially Afro-Indigenous influences with uh, what he calls like Western music and certainly more mm -hmm. of my influences that come from punk rock and uh, different American and European music traditions. Um, and, and then also bring in like rap and hip hop and reggae, all these other sort of world musics uh, and American musics and 
that was four years ago and now we've written uh, about a dozen songs together and are hoping to put them out in an album format soon. Um, Well, well, I've certainly enjoyed the the audios that you've sent to me and then of course the the uh, Zoom live performances that yeah, I hope to do another of soon. Yeah, yeah it's, fa- it's fantastic music, and I love I love the, um, the what it stands for too because I, I think that art in all of its forms, whether it's you know painting, music, um, poetry, you know uh, literature, art in all its forms of, has always been from the early days of time has been the way that humans have communicated about the moments they're living in. And it's been one of the most powerful forces for, I think, talking about social issues or social justice. Um, And so I love the genesis of that. I think it's really, it's really beautiful. And it really, you know, as we've been having our conversations about this project, um, you know, very much the ideas that, you know, addressing Using the art to address social issues, I think is, for me, it's inspiring. You know, in my my normal practice, um, my work is really not derived um, from and or speaks to that. But I think think it's a powerful opportunity to do that. And it's one of the things that really excites me about being involved in this with with Gato. Um, So I just really appreciate the openness to the idea of, of collaborating in this way. And in our conversations, I've also, you know, have learned a lot about the Dominican culture and the parallels between the path of um, Africans, American citizens that descended from Africa and Dominican citizens that descended from Africa and the way that our social structures have some commonality and how the reality of the day-to-day life is is in a lot of ways very similar for a large percentage of populations on both ends of that conversation. And so to create better understanding and communication of that truth uh, between the two countries and the two cultures is a really beautiful opportunity, I think, in a way that we can utilize art to communicate that. Definitely. Sí. Tú sabes que en el desarrollo de mi obra y de mi posición como artista, Pues yo, como no fui a la escuela, yo, yo fui a alguna escuela, pero no logré título. Yo aprendí más con maestros, con pintores, con artistas que fui conociendo. Y bueno, también leyendo mucho, investigando. Y sobre todo le comentaba ayer que la forma en que los movimientos de artes y las ideas de los artistas trascienden o el discurso político, político social trasciende es en la cuando los artistas comparten de la misma manera en la que se genera la cultura cuando una persona se levanta de su casa y sale a la calle y comparte con otra entonces expresado eso ah también segundo para intentar ah yeah what he just said was really cool and totally tied in I have to see if I can recapture all of it now. Um, but he's kind of building off of what the same thing that we're talking about the, with collaboration. Uh, Gatta says, you know, he didn't go to, he didn't graduate from art school. He doesn't have like a, a master's in fine arts or something. Where he mostly learned art from was from working with other artists, working with master artists. Um, working with poets and actors and people engaged in other art forms and that if you want yeah like an artistic movement or also a political movement or political change that's what you need is people coming together working together in that way collaborating in that way and that's how you that's how you ultimately create culture change culture um Y bueno, en ese sentido, para mí, de, de eso se ha tratado como mi desarrollo, uh-huh. eh, de compartir y aprender, eh, porque también nosotros estamos en un país, en una isla que está en medio de grandes continentes, uh-huh. 
y por aquí pasa toda la información siempre. Yeah, so he said his his whole sort of development as an artist has been through that, through sharing and learning from other artists, from other people. And um, the Dominican Republic is a kind of a relatively smaller, on a relatively smaller island that it shares with Haiti, but that's surrounded, mm -hmm. sorry, by, by major powers, by the United States on one side of the ocean, by Europe mm -hmm. on the other side. Um, and a lot of information, a lot of people pass through here, actually. Um, like Angie? Like me, yeah. <laughs> so so Gatto has been nourishing himself from yes. different people, different cultures, different ideas, sí. his whole Entonces, life. Tú sabes, cuando con el tiempo los artistas desarrollan eh, sus propias herramientas, para eh, alcanzar sus proyectos, sus metas. Por ejemplo, si quieren hacer, en el caso mío, si quiero hacer una canción eh, de los gavilleros, tengo el conocimiento cultural y voy a, a investigando, 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 ¿sabes? En la investigación, en la historia, están los personajes, las personas. Por ejemplo, en el caso de Gavillero, yo quería hacer una canción para un personaje de aquí, pero que tenía su momento álgido en la interacción con un personaje de Estados Unidos. Era cuando con los marines de norteamericanos. Entonces. Yeah, so he's saying he. For example. For example, I say. One of his main like artistic tools is really doing research. Um, he's gotta go get water. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> under the table. Um, so yeah, one of his main artistic tools is doing research, historical research, and that he incorporates like people that he meets in that research, uh, characters from history into both mm -hmm. his, his paintings and his music, his lyrics. So we have a song called Gavillero. Um, and the Gavilleros were kind of like a guerrilla force, um, almost kind of like Dominican cowboys in some ways, oh, but oh, fought oh, against the when the United States invaded for the first time in the early 20th century, they invaded Santo Domingo, um, the Dominican Republic. Okay. So yeah. He wrote this song about one of the leaders of the Gavilleros. Um, but I need the other part, part of the history. It's not just one guy. Right. The guy right. made, uh, hizo una hazaña, pero against other people. And if you need to make a culture, you need two group or two person. No, two idea, do I, do, 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 do more. It more, two or more idea, and to develop new content para desarrollar nuevos contenidos. En ese sentido, siempre es la forma que he desarrollado para crear mi obra para desarrollarla como artista es a través de la búsqueda constante y de la eh, apropiación histórica. Yeah, so his art that very much his way of making art comes from historical investigation and what he calls appropriation, like taking that history and making it his. Yes. So how does that yes. relate to like your process for art making or for conceiving of a piece, James? Yeah, I, th I think it's really interesting because, you know, up until now, um, on my art path, you know, I'm an abstract painter, non-figurative painter you know, up until this point. And um, so my, my, my sources for my work up till this day have really been more about my personal experiences. So you know, my, my inspirations can come from, from uh, 
some event I've experienced or some just common day um, occurrence <laughs> that, that happens and I'm inspired by it. it, oftentimes derived through conversations. So a lot of times I'll have conversations and um, you know I'll go to paint and you know it's, I'm an expressive painter and I'll sit back, something I do, a practice I do is uh, after I've painted, I typically don't try to do much in the way of interpretation of my work until I've left it for a while. I used to call it meeting the painter yeah. in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just about to say. Yeah, when I painted at home, I'd, I'd you know, shut off the lights at night, and then in the morning, I'd come down with my coffee, mm -hmm. and I would sit with it and try to understand what it was that I was communicating through, through my work. Um, now that my studio is you know, downtown, it can be a day or two you know, later, but same process, still looking at it for the very first time as if it was the first time I was seeing it and trying to understand what it was I was trying to communicate. So it can be experiences, it can be conversations, it can be you know, thinking of a person, it can be something I've read. Um, all those things are influences. Yeah. Um, I, think it, I think that's an interesting thing because it means in, in the method that we're using right now, and I know we're gonna reverse this here in the future, but what we're doing at the moment is I'm doing a series of canvases that are gonna be somewhere between four or six. <laughs> you know, it seems like every day I think, oh, maybe I'll do two more. Um, yeah. That are effectively gonna be a starting point of my, of my abstract form of painting. And then Gatto is gonna take those paintings um, with no restrictions, do whatever he wants to co-collaborate to make those a, a combined work, our work together. Um, you know, I do think that because I do work based on what I'm inspired by or what's impacting me on a given day translated to work, I could easily see where the figurative nature or something else that's symbolic of the social nature might come into this work because that's what we're focused on in our work together. Mm -hmm. And so I'm interested, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'm interested to see if that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, because I just think that's, you know, in some ways almost inevitable. The few paintings I've made that I would say have literal figurative representation have come from a specific event. And so I do know that that's happened on a couple of occasions. I think it was maybe three or four paintings over almost three years where that's occurred. So it's interesting to see what happens with that. But my process is really more <clears throat> just based on inspiration, feeling in the moment. Mm -hmm. Expressed through color, use you know, color and texture. Um, yeah. yeah. But I'm open to the idea that may, that some of my work might become more representational over yeah. time together working on this project. Yeah, totally. Definitivamente, yo creo que la la cultura se genera sin tener una una guía. Como, mm -hmm. Tiene que ser orgánico. Sí, tiene que ser orgánico. La, la persona People develop culture in a manner, organic manner. Yeah, but so our culture me, develops organically. Yeah, but kind of the way that, that if you do start painting more representationally, it will be sort of an organic outgrowth of this collaboration of these other experiences, your whole sort of path as an artist. But now, I am a scientist of the art, an artist. He una says, persona he's a, que es, and, conoce la forma de eh, get eh, organic things and became in a pieces. ¿Lo en español? Que ahora, por eso soy artista, porque ahora yo tengo la capacidad de ver mm -hmm. en la forma orgánica que la gente genera la cultura, esos colores, mm -hmm. tomarlo hacer una investigación, tomarlo y convertirlo en una pieza. Okay, so yeah, he says he's an, an artist and a scientist because he can see how sort of the culture that has developed organically and, and do sort of research over that and then um, take all those different pieces and get the thing and make up pieces. Put them all together into his own work. And develop with that on the canvas or guitar or whatever. Yeah. You know, if I if I go to the street and yes. see yeah. some children cry and I an, analyze the situation, yeah. I go to my house and make an art or music or poetry, you know, 
is not necessarily happen to me now. Yeah. For create yeah. and para crear una obra. Mm -hmm. To create a work. To create a work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So two different styles that are going to meet on the canvas. Yeah, which I like. Um, and I think we'll work together really well. I think so too. Sí. Ese tipo de desarrollo que dice con me. Mm -hmm. eh, donde él estaba viendo cosas en mi obra, yo estaba viendo en la, en la obra de él y después cada uno extrayendo, se da línea, se da un poco de pintura así. Oh, okay. Entonces, para nosotros desarrollar una técnica, no un estilo ni un movimiento, una técnica para luego intervenir en cualquier situación. Mm -hmm. En el momento que vi la obra de él, esa pequeña, Entonces ya tenía, utilizando esas técnicas, estas oh, herramientas, okay. podría intervenir en su obra sin que fuera como hacer algo así sin pensar orgánicamente mm -hmm. y respetando el proceso de él. Yeah, so he's saying kind of the experience he had working with his friend, the other artist, um, Ney Enriquez, that what they did something very similar where they would each paint their own work and then look at the work of the other and sort of take out like little pieces from it, lines or shapes or colors, whatever, yeah. to yeah. add to their own. And then in that way, they were, they sort of developed a technique of how to do that, that they could take to any other space and apply to any other work. And so Gato says that when he first saw your work, which might have been the painting that I have here, that's like a little one. Yes. Um, yes. That he immediately started thinking about it, seeing it like in those terms with that sort of same technique and that he could apply that technique to your work to bring out the figures, the, the forms. Um, and yeah, do another, yeah. Yeah. That, and, and it's a technique that respects the intent of the other artists. So respecting like what your original work, what you put on the canvas. Que no es solamente como la, la, el sentido de, de copiar mm -hmm. o de apropiarme del discurso de otros, sino como intervenir. Sí, esa es una palabra que no tiene muy buena traducción. Okay, yeah, we're trying to figure out how to translate the... <laughs> The word, the verb for the con, like the concept yeah. that he's talking about, which technically it's intervene. So he says they made, they created this technique to be able to intervene in other works. And I feel like intervene has kind of a sort of a negative connotation in some ways. Like you're, like you're getting in the way, but in Spanish, it's not like that. It's like you're working on the other work. You're adding something to it. You're you're entering into it in some way. Yeah. I mean, um, not, in, not in a negative way. Not in a negative way. It's yeah. more yeah. neutral. So. Sí, pues yo como tuve uno periodo de mi arte donde yo era totalmente naivo. Tenía como técnicas súper orgánicas, súper espontáneas. Pero eh, con el tiempo uno va aprendiendo, ¿verdad? Entonces hay ciertas cosas fundamentales como en la música es la capacidad de poder repetir lo que tú haces que como aunque tú estés haciendo así pero tú lo repites como lo punk uh -huh. que ellos parecen muy desordenados pero saben lo que están haciendo entonces la pero tú haces eso con tu arte también sí la capacidad, la capacidad de, de poder repetir okay la so obra. now I'm saying yeah another important thing is the ability to to be repetitive, both in art and music. And again, like repetitive has kind of a, a negative connotation, right? Right. But right. It's saying really, no, you, we're talking about this, a, a level of skill that you need to have to right. be able right. to repeat. to repeat this technique again and again and, and have a new result every time. Uh, yeah. You know, part of that, and something I've, I've learned in the last three years, is when I first started painting, um, 
every painting you could tell, I think you could tell it was my painting, but it was like every painting was its own unique individual piece of work. Mm -hmm. And that, that's different than creating a body of work, which I think is kind of what, in some ways, what, what Gato was speaking to is that being able to repeat from a skill level so that the, this body of work relates to yeah. each other. It's at a level, they may not be identical, the pieces, but that the techniques that are being used in the manner in which the expressions are being created yeah. have a consistency to them. And honestly, that what you just said is a better translation of what he was saying than, than what I managed. Because um, he was talking about that same thing. Like when he started, he painted in like what he called a more naive style, mm -hmm. but that where, yeah, every work just came out organically and it was its own kind of completed little yeah, universe. It's impossible but that that's him. different from then once he learned, yeah, this technique of repetition, how to. The repetition is not about you get a uh, children and you get next time the same children. It's impossible. Right. You can get twin children, but you you have the possibility to so, okay. get another. So it's children. like having children. Like you're never gonna have the same child twice. You know, maybe you'll have an oldest child, then maybe you'll have twins. Oh, twins. But even the twins will be different, even if they're identical. Uh, you are still the uh, major. <laughs> yeah, but they, they are part of the same family. They're part of the same, they share some of the same characteristics. That's a good kind of analogy for it. It's really good. I like it yeah. a lot. That's a good way of looking at it. So, so let's, for everyone that's watching this video, kind of reset what we're talking about doing and then um, then I want to share something with you guys. So um, what we're going to do is start out with um, canvases that I've already begun painting um, three. I'm not going to do three more. I kind of decided after yesterday. Um, I'm going to send these six canvases down to the Dominican Republic. Oh, yeah. Um, Gato is going to take those canvases. And then that's where the collaboration is going to come from, is he's going to take whatever I've put down and whatever that leads to and his own inspiration and also what it may inspire to create a completed work. Then we're gonna send, he's gonna send those canvases back to us here in the United States. And then because of just a lot of different reasons, the market and you know the infrastructure for offering those out into the community, uh, we're gonna make those available to people so they can acquire that work if they want to. We're also gonna, sh gonna definitely be posting that on our social media and doing other videos to talk about and educate and interpret those works, which will be great. I, I'm looking forward to, you know, doing able to do presentations where we talk about the work and what's in the work. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're talking about doing. So we'll be doing, you know, more videos here shortly and sharing kind of this uh, collaboration with everybody. So the thing I, would, I mentioned to you before we started the recording is I might have a surprise for you guys. And I think I'm gonna, I, I, I wasn't sure that this felt like the right moment for this, but I think it is in our conversation about organically the way things unfold. I mean, Gato mentioned that, that things will happen organically. So um, last year when we went through the initial process of the lockdown um, yeah. because of the pandemic here and of course all across the, the globe, um, concurrent with that in the United States, we were dealing with some pretty significant um, social issues and conversations around race and equity issues and some really yeah, impactful. and those conversations resonated here they did that's um, it's interesting yeah. you know yeah it's also very important at that at that period of time i really struggled with the idea of creating um work that really spoke to what was happening in our times whether that be you know the covid 19 pandemic or the situations that were occurring with respect to um you know, to the social issues that were at hand. And I decided at one point that I was going to create a completely separate body of work apart from my normal expression. It's probably gonna still be expressionist work because that's just what I do, but it was gonna create an opportunity for me to be a little bit more free and maybe representational in some ways um, over time and being able to address my perspective or what I wanted to express 
uh, about all those issues. And probably yeah. the one more important is really more the social justice issues, even more so than the pandemic, which hopefully is going to be, you know, relatively, uh, you know, whatever short means and whatever the long term impacts yeah. are. But yeah. I mean, they're not going to be probably the same kind of issue that rests with us and some of the other social issues that yeah. exist. At that time, um, I made a decision that I was going to paint those paintings and create that work under using a pseudonym, I guess would be the right word, um, an assumed um, name or artist identity. Not that I wouldn't sign those paintings um, to my name, which I certainly would always do, but that really it becomes a different voice apart yeah. from the body of work I'm creating really for my normal art, art path in terms of the work I'm doing commercially or the things that I'm selling on my website and that kind of thing. So, so I feel like, you know, after our conversation yesterday and really getting a greater understanding of the history of the Dominican Republic, the commonality I mentioned before in terms of the path of what we see here in the United States and then what's happened in the Dominican Republic. And then, you know, even um, like you're saying that what's happened here resonated there. Yeah. It makes me feel like that this would be a good time to really embrace that idea. Before, I just didn't feel quite like it was, uh, there was enough reason for it. It didn't feel like the meaning was like a strong enough um, urge to do that. And I, and I feel differently about that now. So um, I'm gonna sign these paintings with my normal James Holmes name, of course, and I'm gonna obviously share about them on all the normal platforms that I've created for my other art practice. But really the artist's identity for these paintings are gonna be under uh, the pseudonym of artifact. And, and the meaning of artifact to me is that you'll know, you will know I was here by what I leave behind, by what I've left behind. Yeah. So That's there's cool. a, yeah, so the deep meaning of the, of the work really speaks to the most, not just the beauty of art and the creation of art and the communication of art, but also the, the serious nature of the very real issues that obviously can be experienced in the United States, but also can be experienced across the ocean or the waterways into yeah. the Dominican Republic. And, and how, how much common around the world. And around the world, ultimately. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so so that's so it feels that feels right to me in this period of time. Yeah. The right moment for that. Mm -hmm. Let me so. tell Gato. El quiere ha querido como hacer otra obra de trabajos. Um otro uh, cuerpo de obras que se conecta más, que habla más sobre la, la justicia social, los asuntos políticos, todo lo que está pasando mm -hmm. en el mundo. Y él quiere tener un seudónimo para eso. O sea, no que no quiere publicarlo bajo su propio nombre, uh -huh. pero quiere ponerle como otro nombre, otro un poco concepto, y el nombre que ha elegido es artefacto. Oh. Porque la idea de un artefacto es como que tú me vas a conocer por lo que yo he dejado. Uh -huh. aquí, y que el arte realmente sirve para sí. dejar Artifact. ese recuerdo. Yeah, we think it's yeah, really cool. Really nice, And you know really what's nice. even cooler about the idea of like the pseudonym? Or what's very ap appropriate about that idea is Me it's kind of like a, a nickname, right? We could say yes. that your nickname will be artifact and nicknames. I have never been in a place where nicknames are more common and more like valued than they are in the Dominican Republic. I mean, Gato, is, that's a nickname. Yeah, I, right? I, just, I just think, think about that. <laughs> think about that. In many books, talk about uh, para universo parallels. Uh, parallel universes? Parallel universe, you know? Imagine in 500 years uh, after, mm -hmm. people uh, are digging through. Digging in the, in the sea. Digging through the ruins of our civilization. And, fi and find some artifacts. Yeah. Then these people made exactly that I explained. Take his knowledge. Esa persona va a buscar, va a encontrar un artefacto. Mm -hmm. Va a buscar en su conocimiento las técnicas para ver 
qué artefacto es. Va a intentar conservarlo y reproducirlo. Yeah, so he's saying like the person in the future who finds um, an artifact, like maybe one of your paintings, will then uh, investigate and look in their own knowledge and whatever other knowledge they have access to, to, to see what was this artifact, why did it exist, uh, and then maybe to be able to reproduce it. Mm. He's kind of saying that's how a lot of art works today, too. It's the same when you go to um, Egypt, yeah. Egypt, Egypt, yeah. and you're looking around, you take pieces, artifacts. Yes. yes. You need knowledge and techniques to be able and say, who is, que es eso, you know? So somebody in the future, yeah, who uses his same kind of method or technique for making art based on investigation, on research, um, they'll be able to do the same. Yeah, then I see, and yo veo en las personas, emociones y situaciones que también pueden ser objeto de plasmar en un artefacto. Sí, y él dijo que ese como él hace muchas de sus obras, mm. se inspira muchas veces en una persona que vio en la calle, en una emoción, sí. un sentimiento. Por ejemplo, la dureza del hierro y el estado del tiempo que ha pasado sobre el hierro no puede ser, tal vez puede ser plasmado en una pintura hiperrealista, pero nunca va a suplantar al hierro. Puede plasmarlo, puede repetirlo, pero entonces ahí está, ahí es que está la importancia de la investigación, de la antropología, de la obra. Yeah, so the importance of like taking sort of an anthropological perspective mm -hmm. in when faced with art or, or artifacts. Yes, um, yes. Sí. entonces... Así, eh, ahora en este momento, como artista, yo siento que estoy así, como tengo muchas herramientas, muchos knowledge para poder reproducir mi obra y que siempre se parezca a mí, siempre sea mi hijo. Yeah, so this is actually something we've talked about a lot too, like with music. So he's saying, um, like right now as an artist, he has the tools, he has the techniques to be able to reproduce his work and it always, and have it always be identified as his, like, yes, like yes. With his children, right? Yes. And yes. actually that's a lot, um, uh, that's an analogy that appears a lot like in, um, I'm thinking like 19th century Spanish literature, like that idea that your poems or your texts or your songs, your paintings, are your children. Yeah. Um, la, la personalidad que tú pones. And you tu... kind of in some way give them their personality. That's sort of yes. a reflection yes. of your personality. And that's why like, I think about when, whenever you've said to me, uh, when I send you a new song or a riff that I'm working on, and you say like, oh, I hear your signature on this. Yes. Um, I think it's the same concept, right? Right. It, is. So it works in, in visual art, it works in music, it works in writing, literature. If you define your, your art like punk, it's because you're able to reproduce all these things. Tú puedes reproducir todo eso temas. Porque tú sabes, Pong es muy, muy amplio. Ya ese es como tú decías, tengo un hijo. Todo el mundo va a pensar que tu hijo va a la universidad. No puede después decir, no, mi hijo es un gato. O tienes que decir, mi hijo, tengo un gato que es como mi hijo. O mi hijo es un gato. Ese, ¿A qué lleva? ¿A qué lleva? A que ahí es donde está la, donde está la autenticidad del artista. Su okay, so yeah, he says the authenticity of the artist yeah. lies in that sort of personality that they're able to 
transmit to each of their different works. You're the which I think we totally see in your works, James, in the style that you've developed over the past three years. You have a dog. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. neighbor come and tell you, yo, you treat your dog like uh, your son. Mm -hmm. You say, yes, it's my dog son. It's like my son. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you treat your dog uh, like a human. And yeah. neighborhood see and tell, your dog never been a human, your artifact never been a man but you give the color, the form, the main, and you put a, a speaker from inside and put, you know, you can, maybe you, may, you make a, a human from different trash. It's not a real human, but many people understand that you want to, yeah, you know, yeah. you reproduce. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. I, I don't know if I explain. That's perfect. That's I perfect. understand that completely, what you're saying. Well, good. Well, this is exciting. I, you know, I, I oftentimes uh, like to say that I look for um, affirmation. Like, I like to look for signs. Mm -hmm. That's just the way I yeah. have always lived my life. And just what you said, Angie, about um, pseudonyms or nicknames being high. Yeah, that's a sign. I thought the same thing when you said yeah. that. Yeah, that's an affirmation to me that yeah. this is the right for you know, sure. decision. So, well, good. Well, I'm going to uh, share my um, website again and my Instagram and Facebook handle. Then, Gato, if you want to do the same uh, for where you'll be posting about this, my website is at jamesholmstudio.com. And both on Facebook and on Instagram, you can find me at James Holmes Studio in both cases. And then, uh, for Gato. Eh, yeah. to sí, mi, mi Instagram es Gato Encarnación, Facebook, Instagram y en YouTube, Gato Encarnación. And, yeah, so it's G-A-T-O and then E-N-C-A-R-N-A-C-I-O-N. Encarnación. In, 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 Encarnación, yeah. And we have our, the Instagram for our band, our, for, our other project, creative project together, which La is Rafa. La Rafaga DR. So L A R A F A G A D R. Yeah. It's not very active right now, but it will be. All right. Excellent. All right. Well, well, we'll be excited to um, get underway. We're going to ship off these initial canvases this week and then. We'll, we'll make more uh, videos and share more content out yeah. with everybody as this project unfolds. And really this is about art, but it's really, it's, it's, it's bigger than that. It's deeper than that. It's about sharing culture, uh, educating about culture and um, yeah. using art as a method of that exchange. So thank you Art is the for, best method for that yeah. exchange, I think. I yeah. agree. I think you two agree. Claro, so. claro. Tú sabes que el, el arte, El arte es para que la gente, las personas en el mundo puedan compartir. Eh, no solamente compartir las riquezas económicas y lo material, pero para compartir la experiencia ser, ser y, y las esencias yeah. humanas. So he says, art, sí. art is for people to share, not to share like economic, uh, wealth or riches or something like that. It's to share human experiences and what are the different experiences that different human beings have on this planet. Yeah. And uh, and that's why authenticity in art por eso is so important. La danza, por eso yeah. yeah, that's why we've got dance, theater, visual art. Um, well, that's, that's the perfect place for it to end. So thank you. Both. Yeah. This has been well, great. Thank you, James. We had a great time talking to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah.